Welcome to the video first grade measurement. In this video, we will examine standards 1MD1 and 1MD2. Standard MD1 has two different parts. The first part is to order three objects by length. The second part is to compare the length of two objects indirectly using a third object. In standard MD2, students are stating the length of an object as a whole number of length units. They will do this by laying multiple copies of the unit end to end with no gaps or overlaps. When selecting objects for first graders to measure, try to select items that are a whole number of units in length. For example, make sure that an object is four paper clips long versus four and a half paper clips long. There are several terms that first graders need to know in order to be successful with standards MD1 and MD2. Vocabulary knowledge is one of the biggest indicators of success. The elementary measurement standards are very rich in vocabulary. Be sure to model appropriate use of this vocabulary and allow students opportunities to use these words in context. In standard MD1, students are asked to compare the lengths of two objects indirectly using a third object. This means that I could use a piece of rope to compare the lengths of scissors and a crayon without moving the scissors or crayon. Since I see that the scissors are longer than the rope and the rope is longer than the crayon, I can determine that the scissors are longer than the crayon. This principle of indirectly comparing the size of two objects is called transitivity. Transitivity is not a skill that is automatically understood by children. Children need a wide variety of hands-on experiences over a period of time to internalize this concept. Standard 1.MD.2 asks students to measure objects by using multiple copies of a shorter object, non-standard unit. Before measuring an object, students must focus on the attribute they are measuring, for example, length or width. They must also realize that they are measuring the longest points of the object, like in the previous slide with the scissors. Even though teachers explain measuring end-to-end -end and having no gaps, students will still have difficulty demonstrating this skill during independent practice and will need guidance until they show mastery of the skill. Children need a variety of hands-on measurement opportunities to begin to gain understanding of how measurement works and to be prepared to use standard units, for example, inches, in second grade. Problems with learning measurement comes as students go to upper grades due to the fact that students don't have the foundation for measurement and why a ruler is used. That is why it is essential for students to use non-standard before using standard tools for measurement, such as rulers. First grade students begin to understand measurement to the whole number. Second grade get a more accurate account. As students gain a better understanding of non-standard measurement, students could line their cubes up next to a ruler to see how long the cubes are next to the whole number. When getting ready to measure an object, make sure that students are provided with more non-standard units than will be needed to measure the actual object. There is a concept called unit iteration, where students are only given one non-standard unit, for example, one paper clip, and they use repetition of that single paper clip to measure the object. This is not developmentally appropriate for first grade and is not the focus of these standards. Two great resources for finding teaching ideas for standards MD1 and MD2 are the book called Student Centered Mathematics and the Cumberland County Resource Guide found on the Cumberland County CNI Google site under Math. If you are looking for some great tools or manipulatives for working with measurement, cash register tape, straws, toothpicks, cubes, and paper clips work very well. There are often two areas of difficulty when first graders measure. The first is when teachers ask students to use their hand as a unit. Hands are typically used to cover things, which would relate to area, not length. To rectify this, feet may make a better measuring tool. The next area of difficulty is measuring a curved or jagged length. Because this task asks to measure the actual paths or compare them, students must find a way to track the path using their non-standard units. The straight line will obviously be easier because students can measure end-to-end. The zigzag line will need to be measured a line segment at a time. 
The last activity we will look at today explores why different size units elicit different measures. This teacher measured himself two days in a row and came up with two completely different measurements. Once students discuss the task, hopefully they will realize that the teacher did not grow. Instead, he must have used two different sized sticky notes. A fun extension activity would be for the students to measure each other using sticky notes. Student outcomes. Students will comprehend non-standard units and tools used to measure in non-standard units. Understand appropriate ways to measure, no gaps or overlaps. Measure to the whole number using non-standard units. Compare two objects indirectly using a third object.